yes, the um, demand for labioplasty is growing um, and um, I think it is steadily growing. I have uh, seen over the last few years and, and, and months as well. Um, I feel it is because of the increased awareness um, people have about themselves uh, in the contemporary lifestyle and body images and body image uh, awareness. Um, these are the main um, factors I feel it is uh, causing increased demand. In addition to the other factors, social, psychological, physical symptoms um, that brings into the uh, whether it is medically necessary or not. And uh, it is um, basically there are lots of patients where it is a medical necessity because of their physical symptoms because they, when they have a large labia, um, when we say labiaplasty, that broadly is considered for labia reduction request um, or labia minora reduction. Uh, and the broad term is used labiaplasty. And when they have a large size of labia minora, which is protruding out, it rubs against the tight clothes, jeans, underwear, undergarments, it also interferes with their physical activities such as gym activities, cycling, horse riding. So these are the physical aspect of um, having symptoms or medical need for the labiaplasty. In addition to the other factors such as social and psychological, it also interferes in the sexual activity as well when people have a large labia minora. And it has a psychological impact on their kind of self-confidence and uh, so that is one of the main reason as well. In addition, sometimes some patients come to me um, complaining that they have issues with the maintenance of hygiene because of the extra tissue creating folds and uh, trapping uh, secretions and sweat. So there are various aspects for the increasing demand um, and the reasons for the request of labioplasty. Yes, it is medically necessary in many patients who request this purely on the medical grounds because of large labia size, rubbing against their tight clothes, interfering with their uh, tight jeans or in physical activities, horse riding, cycling, gym activities, um, and um, social and psychological aspects as well. Socially, sometimes people are reluctant to put swimwear when they go for swimming because the, it shows through certain clothes, you see, um, and interfering with the sexual activity and undermining the self-confidence um, um, and issues with the hygiene maintenance. So these are the main medical reasons for people requesting labiaplasty surgery. So there is a one is a appearance aspect of the labiaplasty where sometimes people have asymmetry and that creates a a sense of abnormality to regain that no normality and symmetry people request labioplasty surgery but at the other times there are physical uh, symptoms and purely for a relief of physical symptoms uh, people want this and actually in fact in my practice I think majority of patients present with the physical symptoms uh, where um, they, they, they seek this surgery and following their, their operation um, they are generally very happy people because they can enjoy the normal activities, all those things which they enjoy doing, like cycling, horse riding, going to the gym without being self-conscious about themselves, wearing tight clothes, wearing swimwear, going to swimming pool, without being um, self-conscious that uh, the, 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 it, it, the, the body parts are excessively showing through and undermining their self-confidence. So it's not only improvement of the physical symptoms but regaining their uh, self-confidence as well which is which has a huge uh, impact on people's life and comfort with themselves and getting out and about um, 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 in their daily life uh, enjoying rather than being uh, self-conscious in my practice main reason is to re-establish normality and i take them when I do the consultation with the patients, I, in conjunction with the patient, I identify what the issue is, where the abnormality is. And then I explain them about the normal appearance of the labia, which is broader in the upper part, but as it goes down, then it narrows down. 
So the aim is to reestablish the normal appearance. Um, and in that, if there is a some some slight adjustment patient is keen to have, yes, uh, I, I do that. So, so in, in a way, yes, it, it's a joint decision between uh, surgeon and, and, and the patient, but the aim is to reestablish the normal appearance. Labiaplasty can be done both ways. Um, I must say majority of my patients I do under local anesthetic. It, some people demand general anesthetic because they are they are a little bit scared of the needles um, um, or they will prefer being switched off um, and in those cases yes general anesthetic but majority of patients are okay with the local anesthetic and the local anesthetic involves maybe about 30 seconds of um, that needle pain uh, associated with the local injection. But after that, they are all, they are comfortable. The operation can comfortably be performed under local anesthetic. Um, and um, generally patients are up and about after that. At the end of the operation, sometime I show them as well when they are awake, how the, the, the appearance is uh, um, looking immediately after surgery. Um, and um, patients usually have a cup of tea and then they are ready to go. So yes, it can be done under local as well as general, but majority of the patients are happy to have the surgery under local and it could comfortably be done without any issue. The operation duration varies between 60 to 90 minutes, I should say, about an hour and a half, 45 minutes each side. Um, it can be done quicker, but I think this is a surgery of precision. Okay, so it's a, it, attention to details and precision are the things which are my main priority when I do this surgery. So honestly, I'm not looking at the clock. When I do this surgery, my entire focus is to get the best possible shape and appearance um, and um, uh, outcome for the patient. But generally on an average, it is approximately an hour and a half or 45 minutes on each side, I should say. It is basically um, performed, as I said, depending upon whether the patient wants general anesthetic or local anesthetic. So um, in the consultation prior to surgery, um, the it is established where the abnormality is, what need to be removed. Um, and that is agreed with the patient and the redundant tissue which protrudes out is a cause of problem is marked and then standard preparation and draping the, the, the standard way uh, is done to make sure this uh, surgery is done in the best um, uh, hygiene and antiseptic uh, with all those measures redundant excessive tissue is after marking is injected um, so that patient is nice and numb it is removed um, then um, stitches are applied, some internal stitches, some uh, outside stitches, and these are dissolvable stitches I, I do. So it's, it's comfortable for patients. So there is no botheration for removal of stitches. Those dissolvable stitches um, kind of uh, get dissolved over the coming uh, one to two weeks, a uh, couple of weeks or so. Um, and after those stitches, some um, antiseptic ointment is applied. Patient is given a soft maternity pad which is tucked in the underwear or undergarments and patients are given post-operative analgesia and antibiotics. I instruct them to wear loose clothes um, and um, basically general instructions about the hygiene are given. For that one week, the general advice is for them to take rest and have a very light physical activities in, in loose clothes and let it heal to its, its, its the best possible uh, way. There are variable factors. It's based on um, whether patient need under general anesthetic or local anesthetic, what sort of facility is the, where the surgery is happening, if it's a clinic or a big hospital setup. Um, and that involves the operating time and the, uh, and the instruments required and the uh, expertise. Um, so those are the factors, but um, the, the, the cost varies somewhere between two and a half to 4,000 pounds. Uh, depending upon um, the, the the requirement. With this surgery, the immediate result is available 
uh, is visible actually soon after the surgery because when I finish the operation, patient can see immediately the improvement. They can appre appreciate the difference. And that's where it is a happy start of uh, recouping or recovery journey. Um, for first week or so, there's a swelling and bruising and it gets worse actually after 72 hours. So I, I warned the patient that it will get uh, swollen and worse. So nothing to worry about. And once they know um, what to expect, um, it, it is a smooth recovery. Um, when I see patients in six weeks time, eight weeks time, most of the swelling uh, has settled and the result is pretty much uh, visible. But I, I, I would say about three months is a good safe period when the final uh, result um, is evident and, and, and that uh, stays on. In my experience, I have not seen people losing sensation because if you're not interfering with the remaining tissue, there should be no issue with the uh, losing sensations. However, along the scar, yes, there will be numbness temporarily. People obviously will have a painful, tender scar for a variable period of time, but generally uh, the, the, the sensation remains fine for, for, for most of the patients. I, I have not come across any patient who will say that they have lost the sensation. It is important that the tissues are given enough time to heal without interference. Uh, one should wait until the swelling and bruising settles and the tenderness and pain settles as well. Tissue, although heals pretty quickly after labiaplasty, after one week, most of the healing completes, but the tissue is still fragile. So I instruct patient to wait for a good six weeks because any interference the tissue is still swollen, fragile um, and tender is going to be a painful experience with the potential for causing damage to, um, to, to newly operated area. So my general instruction is at least wait for six weeks and patients should see them themselves, listen to their body and see if they feel that they are pain free, they are comfortable or they almost forgotten they had a surgery. Um, and, and that is a safe uh, way of uh, kind of taking things. And in, I also ask them to be mindful. Uh, initially, be a little bit extra cautious, making sure there is no excessive rubbing, um, there is a good lubrication, and having a kind of gentle first few encounters to make sure um, that the tissues are not unnecessarily hurt. So six weeks is a, is, is a generally a good um, kind of timeline done.